Here's an interesting kinematics question which looks at the misconception that has to do with the idea of relative velocity as seen from the perspective of a rotating frame of reference or from the perspective of an observer who is rotating, to put in sim simpler terms. And if you'd like to see something similar on the channel or if you have any suggestions for any specific topics or problems that you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. Now let's read the question and let's try to understand it. So we're dealing with two aircrafts and we know that aircraft B has a constant speed, not velocity, but a constant speed of 150 meters per second. And in this particular moment, it passes the bottom of a circular loop, which has a radius of 400 meters. Now, 100 meters below aircraft B, there is aircraft A, which has a constant velocity. So it has a constant speed and it's traveling in a straight line. And that speed is 100 meters per second. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to find the instantaneous velocity. So for this particular moment that we're shown here, we have to find the instantaneous velocity, which A appears to have with respect to someone in aircraft B, which once again is rotating. And then in part B of the question, we have to do the same thing again, but this time we're going to ignore the fact that B is rotating. In other words, for part B, we're going to treat aircraft B as having a constant velocity of 150 meters per second and not just a constant speed. Okay, but we'll get to that uh, a bit later. For now, let's try to do part A. So the first thing I would do is find what the um, angular velocity is. And we can find that pretty easily. So the angular velocity is the velocity of the aircraft or the speed of the aircraft uh, divided by the radius of curvature, which is constant, which gives us 150 divided by 400, which turns out to be... 0 0.375 and those are of course radians per second okay so what we can do now is we can convert this angular velocity to a vector and we have the fact that aircraft b is rotating counterclockwise and the question also gives us a set of axes by default so we have y going upwards we have x going um, this way and we have z going this way. So what this means is that the vector omega would be 0 0.375 multiplied by k. Okay, so it's a positive vector in the z direction. So let's try to get an expression for the relative velocity of a with respect to B. And to do that, I'll just use Euler's uh, equation for velocity, which is the following. So the velocity of A, the absolute velocity of A, is equal to the absolute velocity of B, plus the relative velocity that we have to find, and then plus omega cross BA. Okay, so this omega is, of course, the same omega as this, because while this refers to the angular velocity of the axis, we're assuming, we're considering those x, y, z axis to be fixed to the aircraft labeled as B. Okay? So let's try to rearrange and get an expression for the relative velocity. So what we will have is the following. The relative velocity equals the velocity of A minus the velocity of B and then minus omega cross BA. Okay, so we know every single thing here. So we know that the velocity of A is 100 multiplied by unit vector I, because that's purely in the x direction, and VB in that case would be 150I minus, and the determinant, the cross product, is going to be the following. So omega only has a z component, so everything else is 0, and this is 0 0.375, and then BA is the position vector of A with respect to B. So 
we know what that is, it's 100 meters and it's in the negative y direction with respect to b, meaning that that would be 0 minus 100 and 0 again. So what that gives us is, first of all, minus 50, that's 100 minus 150, minus, and then we have i multiplied with, and this determinant will just be 37.5 which gives us a grand total of, so the relative velocity would be minus 87.5 i, and those are meters per second. Okay, so with respect to someone in aircraft, so with respect to the pilot of B, aircraft A seems to have a velocity of 87.5. Okay, and the minus sign tells us that uh, the pilot in B sees the aircraft A going in the negative X direction, so sort of to, towards the tailplane, uh, with a speed of 87.5 meters per second. Okay, now let's try to do this question again, but this time we're going to assume that aircraft B is not actually, well, we're going to treat it as rotating, but we're going to ignore this term, which is the same as the following. So this is the same as saying that you've got an aircraft, uh, a badly drawn aircraft, that is, here, which traveled with, with the 150i meters per second, and you've got the other aircraft at A traveling with 100 i meters per second. Okay, so this is aircraft B, and this is aircraft A. So let's try to find the relative velocity in this case. So we have, using Euler's equation for velocity, that VA equals VB plus the relative velocity. Right, because this term that we usually include is zero because the the coordinate system that's attached to B, in this case, is no longer rotating. So this third term on the right-hand side just cancels out, which means that the relative velocity is VA minus VB, which is minus 50i, and that's meters per second. So that's really interesting. And it tells us that if the two aircraft are flying side by side in straight lines with 100 meters in between them, like this, then as long as they're flying in a straight line, the pilot of aircraft B will see the aircraft A traveling backwards with a speed of 50 meters per second which is easy to understand. Now, in the first case, although the two aircraft have a velocity of 150 and 100, uh, similar to what's happening here, just because the aircraft at B is rotating as opposed to traveling in a straight line, the velocity of A as perceived by the pilot from B is different. It's 87.5 uh, meters per second going backwards rather than just 50 meters per second. So this one is just the difference of the two speeds, but this one also takes into account the fact that B is rotating. So I think the conclusion here is that whenever you have to find a relative velocity, always think whether whoever measures that relative velocity is in an inertial frame of reference. In other words, are they traveling in a straight line with constant speed? or are they accelerating in some way, because that actually makes a big difference. And that's the end of the question.